Now, Egypt was green when you imagine that these were built, Correct, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. So that takes us back to the time period of their construction and operation, which is a time period known as the Saharan wet period. Mm -hmm. And there was prolific rainfall in the upper Eastern Sahara during this time period. And we see the agricultural areas that were located along the Nile River moving out into the upper Eastern Sahara. And I believe that the terraforming applications so not only creating thunderstorms, but also use fertilizers to go out and transform the desert into an agriculturally rich farmland. So this is the secondary application for the Egyptian pyramids and the ancient structures in Ireland, these stone circle systems mm -hmm. and the white horse hills of Wiltshire, England. Mm -hmm. So we recently had a research expedition to England and Ireland. And we were exploring these white horse hills that all have standing stones at the top of these hills. Mm -hmm. And there's two sloping sides. We'll get to it here in just a minute on, on these hills. And they're inscribed with a white horse. Now, the white horse is relatively modern. But if you look at the symbolism of the white horse, it is an ancient symbol for thunderstorms and lightning. In all of these ancient religions and mythologies, the white horse symbol has existed to in indicate cumulonimbus clouds and lightning gods. Okay. So there is a direct secret in plain sight emblazoned on the white horse hills of Wiltshire, England, indicating that these hills were used to generate thunderstorms. And I'll get to exactly how that was happening here in just a minute. Okay. But la that, led, <laughs> that led me to the final conclusion about the operation of the Egyptian pyramids, which were also to produce thunderstorms which is a direct connection to what Randall Carlson is working on with the modern thunderstorm generator. Okay. And we'll, I can't wait to see how this oh, is dude, all yeah, Oh, dude, yeah. Oh, dude, it's all going to wrap up together. And it's, it's, it's again, I, I never intended to stumble across all of these discoveries, but it's one of those things that once you start pulling the thread, the whole thing starts to unravel. And when you look at it from the perspective of physics and chemistry, everything really starts to make sense in terms of the configuration of the chambers. Okay, so you first, you you came up with this hypothesis about how these pyramids were chemical processing plants and, and why they produced chemicals, you assume it's, it's, it's for fertilizer. One application, yes. One of the applications for, yeah, yeah. for fertilizer. How did you become aware of the the hills in England that you that you claim are built to or were are there to generate thunderstorms or cumulonimbus clouds yeah how did you discover this so the universe works in mysterious ways uh -huh. and there's been some synchronicities along my journey that I never could have anticipated so we went to England I was going to propose to my wife Alexa at Stonehenge mm -hmm. so I went there for the this was the whole impetus of our trip to England and Ireland was a, a for the proposal. Mm -hmm. we we're going to go to Stonehenge and drive around that area so that we could investigate the ancient structures around Stonehenge. And mm -hmm. then we we're going to go to Ireland so that I could finally document all of the structures, for example, New Grange and all of these other passage chamber structures that are directly already included in my first book in terms of the production of a chemical called ferrous sulfate. And we'll get to that here in a minute. Okay. But the White Horse Hills were kind of an unexpected discovery where, you know, we're driving around and looking on Google Maps for ancient sites, and we just happened to see this structure called the Cheryl Obelisk. Okay. So this guy built an obelisk on top of one of these white horse hills in the place where the standing stone once originally was erected. So I had to see this thing in person, you know, an obelisk on top of one of these hills in mm -hmm. England because I knew that there was a connection again to ancient Egypt. Right. And by this obelisk was built, what, like the 1800s or something? Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you can Google Cheryl Obelisk. I yeah. don't know the specific dates yeah. of when it was erected, but it's a relatively modern addition to the site. But they say that it's hollow, mm -hmm. and it was built upon the place where the standing stone originally stood on top of this hill. So these things were designed to give lightning the shortest path to ground. Okay. It is the highest point of elevation anywhere on the landscape. And you have this huge standing stone, which would have acted like a lightning rod. And all of these structures are built on chalk bedrock. Okay. It's a uh, Cheryl, C-H-E-R-R-I-L. E-R-R. -R. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yep, yep. The Cheryl, Cheryl Obelisk. First try. Yeah. Look at that one next to that on the right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's that's it. That's the same thing. And it's this huge obelisk uh-huh. on this hill. And, and again, you're standing up there, and it is by far the highest point on the landscape. So you saw this, and what made you think thunderstorms? So when I first went to Egypt in 2017, mm-hmm. I had this intuition that the Great Pyramid specifically was being struck by lightning. And now we have evidence from these chemical analysis of samples from the Giza Plateau that proves that there were lightning strikes on the plateau. They found these silicate microspherules Mm -hmm. from fulgurites. So fulgurites are essentially fossilized lightning. So when lightning strikes sand, for example, it'll fuse all of this sand together and it produces silicate microspherules. In some of the chemical analysis that was taken by the ACIDA project, they found these silicate microspherules from fulgurites, which is direct evidence that the area around the Great Pyramid was being struck by lightning. They found these next to a structure called the Trial Passages, which is on the northeastern corner of the Great Pyramid. So I had this intuition back in 2017, and I always knew that lightning was the power source of the Egyptian pyramids, because you have to have a power source to drive all these chemical reactions. And I truly believe that the Egyptian pyramids and all of these ancient structures across the planet were designed to work in conjunction with the forces of nature. They were harnessing these naturally occurring phenomenon, like the telluric currents flowing through the surface of the earth, which is something that was Nikola Tesla was huge into researching telluric currents because they're extremely important in the function of our planet, Mm -hmm. storm systems, telluric currents are directly connected to lightning strike locations. And I believe Tesla was on this. And earthquakes. Correct. Yeah, they're all, all connected. So I'm a huge proponent of the electric universe theory. And that our entire solar system is a huge electromagnetic system. Mm -hmm. So everything that's happening on the sun, the moon, the planets, and the earth are all this interconnected electrical system. And I believe this is knowledge that was possessed by this ancient civilization that we still fully don't understand. The mechanism, the operation that go into how our planet work. Mm -hmm. And I believe this ancient civilization knew this, which is why when you see the medieval alchemists... They always did all of their chemical reactions and sacred rituals in conjunction with the movement of the planet and the stars because they understood that there were specific events and electromagnetic phenomenon that occurred during these conjunctions and solar alignments and lunar alignments and planetary Mm -hmm. conjunctions and all this kind of stuff. Right. Same reason why the Egyptian pyramids are also aligned to these same phenomenon. So, okay. Um you had an intuition where you you just you saw the pyramids and you just thought lightning. You just thought it had this has to have something to do with lightning. Yeah, I remember I was sitting at the Mina house and we were I was smoking a cigar and sitting there eating dinner uh-huh. and I was looking up at these things and I was like, man, if there was any sort of electrical storm, this is by far the tallest structure on the landscape. Uh-huh. And lightning is always going to seek the shortest path to ground in an area where there's a differential in the charges, right? So lightning occurs because there's negative charges in the atmosphere, positive charges on the ground. That causes the electrostatic discharge of lightning. Does lightning still strike the Great Pyramid a lot today? I've heard anecdotally that people have said that they have seen it, but there's also not a lot of thunderstorms anymore. This goes back to the time period of operation during the Saharan wet period Mm -hmm. where the pyramids were actually operational. And the operation of the Egyptian pyramids was directly related to the terraforming of the Eastern Sahara. I believe that the Saharan wet period is a direct result of the terraforming applications of the Egyptian pyramids and that these things were built to create this transformation of the landscape, to bring the rainstorms to the area. They were producing chemicals to fertilize all of the sand and turn it into rich agricultural farmland. So they are infrastructure constructions, right? So one of the things is, what is the reason for building these huge monuments? And why do they have to be so perfect too? Because they're chemical plants. What What is the, how do you explain the precision? Do they need that precision? Those like perfectly square structures, like those, those the circumference of the pyramid or when you measure like the angles, like yeah. all the angles are perfect and yeah. the slopes are exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. So we go into precision tolerance machining these days, mm-hmm. right? And the more precise your machine is 
the better it operates. Yes. And these things were designed to harness these electric fields, the telluric currents flowing through the earth, also these specific alignments of the planets, the, the, um, the sun and the moon. So the more specific the alignments, the more precise the device, the more effective the production of the machine. <laughs> 